I think of myself as a little bit of an Apple evangelist. I worked for them for the better part of a decade, but I'm starting to have some very, very serious concerns. And if you have an iPhone that you use, you should have concerns too. Hi, my name's Tyus. I make videos about personal freedom, escaping the rat race, living your freest life possible. And part of living a free life is that of having privacy. Now, if this is something that matters to you and you care about it, hit the subscribe button below. Apple has always been good about privacy. They've encrypted your messages. They've secured your backups. They've protected people's personal information. But that might have recently changed, and you should stay in this video and watch this till the end where I will tell you what you should do about it. When it comes to your privacy online, Apple was one of the very last holdout companies, especially when it comes to the big companies. We've known for a long time that search engine companies have been creating online profiles for people about what they search for. They've sold that off to advertisers or whoever else would buy that information. We've known that those that supply you with free email accounts have been reading those email accounts and figuring out what you want to shop for and selling that to advertisers or whoever else is willing to purchase it. We've known that retailers such as Amazon or other large retailers online track what you look for online and what you buy and create a profile which they sell. And social media companies, they track who you know and what you enjoy and what makes you happy or sad. Apple was one of the last, last large companies on the planet that seemed to really care about protecting your privacy but that might have all changed. They say that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And Apple's newest operating system, iOS 15, which is what is used to run iPads and iPhones, well, it has lots of good intentions. Specifically, there is a new ability to help protect children from sexual abuse, which is great. Nobody's going to be against the idea of making sure kids are safe from sexual predators or from sexual abuse. The issue is how this is implemented, what it does to do it, and the big can of worms that it opens up by making this available. So what Apple is planning on doing is looking at all the photos that you have connected into your phone through iCloud. Now iCloud is a syncing service, a backup service. It also lets you look at your photos on a web browser but basically it has access to all the photos in your phone and it will then match those up to a registry of other photos that we know are sexual misconduct or sexual abuse of children. And when it matches those up, it then has Apple inform the government, hey, this person's doing something really bad or has bad content. But it raises a lot of questions. What happens if somebody were to send you one of these terrible, inappropriate, illegal photos to your phone? Are you now breaking the law because you've received something and could you be sent to prison for it? Or what happens if the government decides that they want to find additional different kinds of content on your phone? Could they have access to this and somehow search your phone for information that you might not want them to have, violating your Fourth Amendment rights? Or what happens if a hacker gets access to this information and can go through your phone and find any photo that they want or maybe blackmail you for photos of yourself that you don't want existing out there on the internet. The US government requires companies to report if they see any content that has sexual abuse of minors in it. And they have to report that to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. If they find this content and choose not to report it, they can face a fine of up to $300,000. But this is only if they find this content. Ultimately, Apple is going in search of this content. They are taking an active step. And while I do believe their intent is noble, I do think they're trying to do it for the sake of children, they are opening up a massive problem uh, and a massive security hole in their operating system. Apple has responded to the backlash of this saying that they're doing a better job, a more secure job of protecting your privacy even though they're going through all of your photos. They say, hey, look at, look at Google, look at Microsoft, they're doing it so much worse. The problem is, Whenever you're doing something that is going to open up a back door into your technology, it could be exploited. There's really no such thing as perfect. And this is a situation that Apple knows all too well. In 2016, the FBI requested that Apple provide them with a back door, a way to look into people's iPhone or iPhone backups so that they could use that for evidence. This was following the San Bernardino shooting. They wanted evidence on the shooting that they believed was stored in an iCloud backup. And Apple denied them and made headlines for doing it. And then this happened again in 2020 when another shooting took place, this time in Florida. And again, Apple said, absolutely not. We're not giving away a back door so that the government can access everybody's personal information. Apple said, and I quote, 
The United States government has demanded that Apple take an unprecedented step which threatens the security of our customers. We oppose this order, which has implications far beyond the legal case at hand. Apple knows that an exploit violates every single person's privacy. So what did the US government do in response? Well, they went in search of something called a zero day exploit. See, all technology comes with flaws. Nothing is perfect. And the FBI paid $1.3 million to hackers to show them a way to gather that information. But there's a difference between an exploit and an intentional backdoor that is created by the company. Because exploits can be patched by the company. When they find a flaw in their technology, they fix it. But if they were to put in a backdoor in their technology, that is never going to be fixed because that's ultimately a feature. That is something that is intentionally put in there. And in this case, it is a feature that is designed to let people access your personal private information. Now, some people have argued that they have nothing to hide. They've done nothing illegal. Why should they worry about it if the government is looking through people's personal information? But that's like arguing that just because you have nothing to say means you shouldn't have a First Amendment right and you don't need freedom of speech because you've got nothing to talk about. It's obviously a, a, a flaw. It's a bad argument. It's a terrible argument. People should be allowed to protect their privacy, whether that is who they hang out with or what they have in their possession. People shouldn't be able to go through and see in your photos what you own or what you don't. That should be your private personal information if you want to keep it that way or where you go. Keep in mind that your photos are tagged with information about your location. So if people are able to access those photos, they're also able to access exactly where you've been. If you want to see how immensely powerful this is and you own an iPhone, take out your iPhone and go to your settings app. Now, once you're inside of settings, scroll down to you see privacy. It's one of the little tabs there and inside of privacy, you'll see location services. Now, if you scroll toward the bottom of that in system services, you can scroll down and you'll see something that says significant locations. And you might be very surprised to see how many locations your phone tracks you as far as where you go on a daily basis. Now, multiply that. Multiply that by the 220 million iPhone users that are out there. One in every six phones is an iPhone. We're talking about being able to track the precise location of 226 million people or one in every six people with a phone. So what are you supposed to do about this? There's a limited amount of options. The first thing you can do is rather than using the native applications that come with your phone that the operating system is automatically going to attack, you could use alternate applications. So for example, rather than using the messaging app that will be looking at your messages moving forward with iOS 15, you could be using an app like Signal that is really, really protected. Another option is you could move away from using iPhones. There are phones that are designed specifically around security. The Black Phone 2 and the Librem 5. I've never used either of them, but they are security based phones. The drawback to that is they probably not, are not going to run the apps that you're comfortable with or that you're using. They're probably using an operating system that while they are incredibly secure are probably not as user friendly. And the last thing you can do and the thing that I'm promoting doing is going out and telling people, letting people know that this is happening. If enough people are talking about it, if enough people see the problem with it and complain about it, well, then they're going to be able to do two things. They're going to vote with their dollars in not buying phones, which will force Apple to make a shift in their decision, or they're going to to be able to share that information with other people and hopefully affect the market. Now, I normally don't make content like this. I normally like to make content that is evergreen, where the content can be seen anytime. This this video is going to expire. Apple's going to make a decision on whether they move forward with this or whether they don't. So if you enjoy this video, please share it because this content is going to be important because it's timely right now. If you like the content around free and living your freest life and personal liberty, then please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. And I hope to see you on the next video.